Good morning, folks. It's a special news day for a couple reasons. First, we've been exploring the new electric universe theories for some time now. We've discussed the electric earth and sun, I've spoken at the annual conference, we've investigated effects at the tiny levels of our universe, while also compiling the newest data from the great beyond, from star and galaxy formation on a Birkeland current with nodes perfectly spaced apart, to the Fibonacci and other magnetic movements and structures on the universal scale. Even the newest and perhaps greatest discovery of Laniakea appears to fit an electric rather than gravitational model. And when you see our sister group, the Perseus Pisces cluster, you have to take a moment to think about what this shape is telling us. But now, out from the shadows, it is proposed that the great mysteries of this universe should be explained electrically and not with things like dark matter. Now, Despite this article citing it as a brand new theory, this is a key, long-held point of the new electric universe theories. Despite ignoring the decades of work on this topic, it's still on the right factual track. It is the positive and negative of everything that keeps the galaxies together. There are local, global, solar, and interplanetary magnetic fields and electric fields that we can measure now with ease. To think this wouldn't extend beyond to the galaxy may be a bit naive. This is big news for everyone, in a way. If you don't know how the new electric theories affect our world, I'd suggest sticking around. Cue the big bright thing in the sky. Got a new sunspot group incoming now, getting a little feisty already as he crests the limb. There is not much else going on. While there are lots of little spots on the disk, the only magnetic complexity beyond beta class might be found back here where we can safely call a gamma candidate. Now, Despite the smaller size than what we saw last week, this is the top spot on our star at the moment. Flaring itself is down on the departure of the giant, Here's a little look at our coronal holes, plasma filaments, and umbral fields. There was a gamma ray burst from way down south in the skies in the Carina constellation this morning. This is seven days of solar wind. Note the rise in density and speed over the last day and also magnetic perturbations in the stream. While there's no geomagnetic instability right now, the energy within the system is rising and plasma continues low-level intermittent penetration into the upper atmosphere. Total ozone hole stands its ground compared to the last few years and remains down from its worst, more than 2 million square miles smaller than the record hole. Uganda tops off our unusual location rumbles for the day, continuing well south too with a small uptick near Peru and Chile and another 5 plus magnitude in Iceland. We also had a 4 pointer in Oregon which is the line for above average. We also have a volcano beginning to erupt in Costa Rica. Torrealba hasn't popped like this in more than a century, and they are currently warning of more eruptions to take place. Some good news. The Indian Ocean Cyclone is weakening and pretty much falling apart right now. We have a new storm system, however, in the West Pacific slated to swing north. Vance has been named in the East Pacific now. Still a darn good agreement on where this one is heading. We often discuss the lows sucking in counterclockwise. Well, today the story is the high pressure pushing out clockwise, driving cool air to fuel those record cold temperatures expected this weekend, and aiding a southern convergence as well. Might be some snow a lot further south than expected at this time of year, and plenty of rain in some parts of the desert. How nice of the North Atlantic low to draw not one, but two convergences towards Europe. Both produce the top alerts in the continent today. Down under, we've got one alert above the rest where air masses meet and will shift slightly southeast before rendering some storm effects. Folks, you know we're on the road in the Mobile Observatory project, and without my wife, none of this would be possible, trust me. Ever giving, she is now pregnant with our first child, and there couldn't be a better day to thank her for letting me do this every morning and being so supportive in sharing our dreams. Got some great shots of our star to close at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.40 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.